Friends, I'm Teresa Lusk, your host for today. Thank you so much for tuning in with Teresa Lusk Ministries. I want to talk to you today about dominion. What is dominion? What does our life look like when we are actually walking in dominion? Does it become more fruitful? Is it more effective? Absolutely. You're going to minister to so many people in so many more powerful ways if you get a hold of dominion. But let's talk about it. Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 and 28. Then God said, let us make people, meaning man, in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, become great in number, fill the earth, subdue it, meaning tread down and conquer it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over every living thing that moves on the earth. You know, my friends, we are so good at skipping over the fact that God has given us dominion. We um, need to really walk into it because walking in dominion is walking in authority. And when you walk in authority, you can actually cause things to get in line with what God wants for this earth. Let's read Rome, uh, excuse me, Revelation 1 and 6. To him who loves us and released us from our sins by his blood, and he made us to be a kingdom, priests to his God and Father, to him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. You are a priest. You are a king and a priest, male and female. We are kings and priests unto the Lord here on earth to bring forth the will of the Father. I love it. Be, you've been entrusted with dominion, therefore you operate here on earth as kings and priests. You've been trusted with something. You hear what I'm saying, my friends? This is why it's so important. To have dominion isn't just something that we can, you know, look at and go, oh yeah, I'm in charge, I dominate, I can rule things. It's to bring forth the will of the Father here on earth. So many of believers are living just a good enough life. They wake up every day, they go to work, eight to five, come home, make dinner, eat, watch a little TV, we go to sleep. And while there is a season to work, there is it, the dominion concept is actually a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. And so I want to encourage you with that. So what is the purpose of dominion? Here we go. Luke 10, excuse me, Luke 16, 10. He who is faithful in a very little thing is also faithful in much. And he who is unrighteous in a very little thing is unrighteous in much. Find yourself faithful. This is what I'm saying. When you're given dominion, it's for a purpose. We're going to bring forth God's will and purpose for humanity here on earth. And God said, when you're faithful with that, you'll be faithful with much. You were called a king and a priest according to the word that you may minister to those here on earth, change things around when they're not in line with God's will. And therefore, we must, my friends, we must find ourselves faithful. So instead of coming home every day and watching TV and not doing anything productive, our job is to do many different things. What are those things? I'm about to tell them to you. Number one, we defy what the enemy wants, to, what he wants to make seem normal, even if it's been hanging out in your life for years. When we take dominion, Here's what I mean by that. We take that which has been operating day after day after day after day, and it looks normal. It looks like it should be. It looks like it's good enough. It looks like it's, there's no problem with it in your life. And when we start walking in dominion, we defy that. Give you an example, how we think, right? What we believe about ourselves, that it's okay to be depressed because, hey, I've been depressed for 15 years. It must be normal. It must be God's will. It must be what I'm supposed to be living out. When we take dominion and we start walking in that, 
we begin to say, devil, you're a liar. It's not going to happen that way. I am not called to live a depressed life. I am not called to live in this manner of life. I am called to have life and of that more abundantly, according to John 10, 10. And so what we do, we defy. So when you walk in the dominion life, you defy what the enemy wants in exchange you submit to what God wants for your life. You submit to the uh, uh, benefits of the cross and the resurrection. Jesus died, but he didn't stay there. He rose again. When he rose again, he gave, he, he had the keys to the kingdom. He had the keys to life and death. He had the keys. So now that means that you as a believer are required to live a greater and more abundant life. This is not a prosperity message and I'm not against prosperity, my friends, but I'm telling you that living a, a, a life of emotional health, physical health, mental health and spiritual authority were all God's ideas. A lot of us have been trained for so many years in our churches, in our Christian circles to live just barely good enough because it's the Christian thing to do because it's, Hey, you know, it, it's humble of me and there's nothing you're not exchanging humility or, or you're not giving up humility to walk in dominion. You can be, a warrior, W-A warrior, you can be strong in the Lord, strong and, and in the strength of his might and still be humble. We, some of us have got to break up with the thought that if I start walking in dominion, if I start living out the authority in Christ, if I start doing that, it doesn't mean that I'm giving up humility. It doesn't mean that I'm no longer going to be submitted to God. It doesn't mean that I'm giving into a false theology. We have to be careful. You know, uh, I'm going to be uh, teaching on a, a segment on the Pharisees and Sadducees. And, and the reason why I'm going to do that is because I want people to see how the spirit of religion and tradition operates. It brings forth fear. It keeps you from wanting to break out and walk in what God called you to do. And how did that even have access? We heard it through our Christian circles. We heard it through our churches for years and years and generation after generation. And now when we hear the truth, the undefiled truth, we're afraid of it. Because what if I become this way? What if I become that way when that's not it? When we start living in dominion, we begin to defy what the enemy would like for our lives. My friends, I don't know about you, but that's good news. I've been in bondage before. Trust me, that's good news. That sounds good to me. It sounds like, yes, I can have a better life. I don't have to live in this depression. I don't have to live in this sadness. I can have a better life. I love it. I love it. Number two, we defy what the generational and cultural agenda and spirits that are here in our nation, beyond our nation and other nations are trying to establish. You know, there is, there are spirits that bring forth the agenda of the enemy, just like there's angels who bring forth the agenda of the Lord through humanity. The devil himself uses his cohorts to, to bring forth his agenda through the culture and through the generations. But if we stand up in dominion, if we stand up and release a, a word forth, if we prophesy, if we prophetically release a word of truth and a word of release uh, from bondage, if we stand our ground and proclaim, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord to a thousand generations. I don't care if I see my child acting just like the, the culture. I don't care if I see the culture acting like, like the culture in our, in, around us. I don't care if I see that acting in the same way that the enemy has brought forth. I don't care if I see that my job is to stand and defy what the enemy would like for my people, my future generations, for my present day. And so I encourage you to do the same, my friend, defy it. Um, we will warfare out to have peace on every side because we have dominion that's already been ensured. You know, the word tells us that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. And I love to, I love to point, excuse me, point out the word wrestle because 
Um, so many times we think we're still in a battle, but the battle has actually won. It's been won. We're actually wrestling out of the hands of the enemy what he would like. So sometimes you might have to go to the battle lines and wrestle that which belongs to you out of the hands of the enemy. Have you, if you had not had dominion, you would not be able to do that. The reason why if, if something's going on in my family, my friends, my ministry, and I can open up my mouth and say, in the name of Jesus, that's going to stop. That's going to stop. That's going to halt. That will reverse. That will turn over. Uh, I will overturn that by the authority of Christ. Had I not understood dominion, I would not be able to stand and say that. But that is part of what you will have to do. You will have to practice dominion uh, for this, this kind of situation. Some dominion, hear me out, will be handed to you from prior generations and some you will pass on. What do I mean by that? The keys to dominion were given to us by Christ, settled and done. But if we have family that did not walk in dominion, then there's nothing to be passed on. But if I walk in dominion and I hand it to my children, I hand it to my grandchildren, I hand it to those I love, I hand it to those that I was called to minister to, that is passing down dominion. My kids do not have to grow up uh, not knowing how to take a hold of what's theirs. They don't have to grow up allowing their children to be bullied by the enemy, by culture, by expectations, because they understand that dominion's been passed down to them. My question to you, what are you doing to pass down dominion to your children? It's been paid for, it's been secured, but you do have to take a hold of it. So what are you doing, my friends? What are your children and your children's children going to be able to take with them because grandma Betty, because Papa John, because, you know, whatever, my daddy, my mama, whatever you call them, what will they be able to say you pass down? My children will never wonder if I wore out what needed to be wore out. I encourage you to do the same. Dominion is yours. Um, Dominion allows you to have uh, prosperity and peace on all sides. I'm going to read a scripture to you to prove that to you. Uh, let's look at 1 Kings 4 verse 22. Solomon's provision for one day was 30 cores of fine flour and 60 cores of meal, 10 fat oxen, 20 pastured fed oxen, 100 sheep besides deer, gazelles, roebucks, and fattened fowl. For he had dominion over everything west of the river from the Tifsa even to Gaza all over all the kings west of the river and he had peace on all sides about him. Now, some people could say, oh, Teresa, that's no dominion brings forth peace and prosperity. You know, I sometimes we get so confused with what prosperity is. Prosperity is provision for what you need. Prosperity doesn't mean that I'm going to be a millionaire and a billionaire, a trillionaire, although that's possible. I will not refuse the opportunity to be blessed. If somebody wants to bless me, so be it. I will receive it because it's a blessing from the Lord. Who am I to say, God, I don't want what you brought forth to me. But prosperity is a good thing. It's it's part of dominion and so is peace. It says he had peace and prosperity. I want peace and prosperity. If you want peace and prosperity, let it be released to you right now in the name of Jesus. Well, my friends, I want to share a special message with you. So we will be right back and just hang in there and watch this message for you.
Well, we are back, my friends. I do encourage you to get your copy of my latest book, Unapologetically Free, Deliverance and Freedom Through the Spirit-Filled Life. This book will teach you how to set people free from demonic oppression. Um, it'll teach you about confidentiality. It'll have prayers that you can pray. It'll teach you about living the Spirit-Filled Life, getting baptized in tongues. It's a phenomenal resource, not because I wrote it, but because I know that this is years of training and exposure to the freedom and deliverance ministry so get your copy wherever books are sold also my friends I want to invite you has our ministry made a difference in your life some of you have been watching on social media on television uh, you've been listening to podcasts and you've been receiving from our ministry and that is our heart we want to to give out unconditionally but if our ministry has blessed you tremendously and you say you know what it's time to partner i feel like the lord wants me to give a one-time gift an occasional gift become a monthly partner i invite you to listen to the voice of the lord in that area you can go to our website teresalusk.com to give a gift of any amount remember it's all tax deductible so you're not only giving to a good cause to a cause to change people's lives but you're also giving uh, in a way that will benefit you so we encourage you go to our website teresalusk.com and click on the donate button we're also scheduling events if you'd like to invite uh, my ministry to come and minister to your group Go to our website, email us. We can't wait to hear from you. So God bless you, my friends. So we're talking about dominion today, the benefits of dominion, the purposes of dominion, and how your life can change. I'll give you an example. Uh, the other day, my husband and I were driving down the street. It was just uh, before a, a holiday, and uh, all of a sudden, I see this sign hanging out, uh, just sitting there, and it said, Psychic Reading. Well, when I saw that, because I know the word, and I know what the book of Deuteronomy says, Deuteronomy 18, and because of my own background, I know that the Lord does not want that to be something that is offered. Because I have dominion, because I understand dominion, my husband and I began to speak out. I just began to speak out in the name of Jesus. I cursed that sign and every devil that's behind that, that everything that's behind there trying to lure people, it will not be able to accomplish what it's set out to accomplish. And so I began to break the hold of that to release its power here on earth. And some people say, oh my gosh, you have no authority to do that. Yes, we do. The Lord gave it to us in Luke 10, 19. And because I have dominion, because it's my job to partner with the Father here on earth to bring the will of the Father here on earth, just like Jesus. You know, Jesus said, I only do. He said in John 5, 19, he said, I only can do what I see the Father doing. I can do nothing of myself. And I can tell you by no Knowing the Word of God by knowing what the book uh, of Deuteronomy says, what the Old Testament contains about God warning the people, don't get involved with these people, don't get involved with their idolatry, false God worship, don't get involved with all that. I know it's my job to do the right thing. So I walked in my authority because of dominion and uh, I believe that people will be free. Dominion, my friends, means you will be fruitful. So what have you been producing lately? What have you been producing lately? How do you know if you've been walking in dominion? Dominion has fruit to show. Yes, it has peace. Yet, yes, it has prosperity, but it, all, it, it also has purpose. Is, are your prayers, are your commandments, the things that you command, are they bringing forth what, what people need from you? Are they bringing forth life and hope and, and aspirations, a greater relationship with Christ, a deeper love for the word in you and in people you love? Is your, your dominion is not just to be. It's so that you can cultivate God's will and purposes here on earth. So where's your fruit? I got to ask. Um, and with dominion, we multiply. You take one gifting and you can multiply it with skills, 
money, relationships, favor, etc. When you walk in the understanding of dominion, you know that you were called to bring forth multiplication. You know, we're even told to do that in Genesis 1, 26 and 28. We are to multiply. Multiplication is one of the things that you can be assured that the dominion is being walked out because you see it. So what have you, what have you seen? Uh, we tread down and we conquer in dominion. I've been saying that most of this message because I am a deliverance minister. I love dominion. Uh, I love walking in the freedom and deliverance ministry. I love to see people be set free. I know that I can tread down on ser serpents and scorpions and I can conquer uh, what the Lord told me to conquer. And so it may take a moment. It may take a minute. It may take a few years, but I am called to do it. And so, uh, and so also you prophesy when you have dominion. What do you mean by prophesy, Teresa? The Lord hasn't told me anything about anybody. Prof to prophesy means to speak forth. And so some of it may be inspired, uh, God inspired uh, to speak forth. And some of it is actually speaking forth uh, the will of God. I don't have to have a word of knowledge or know something that God dropped in my spirit to prophesy. I can speak forth and I can basically decree and declare what will be. That is how I take dominion. I have spoken forth for years. Uh, you know, I've spoken forth over people that I love. I'll call out their name and say, you so-and-so, you will serve the Lord. You'll love him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. You'll love your neighbor as yourself. You will love God. You'll pursue the things of God. You will not walk in darkness. I'll break the hold of the enemy. And let me tell you, can I say that every single person that I've spoken over is walking in complete freedom today? No. Can I say that I've been praying and prophesying for years to, over some people? Absolutely. I will not stop. I don't care how long it takes. I am determined to see those that I love, those I care about, and my family free, walking fully in the Lord. You can do the same. I don't only do that about people that are lost. I do it for the things, the calling of God on my life. You know, there's been prophetic words of so many sorts. So what do I do? I prophesy. I speak over my own life. I will speak to the nations. I will be a part of changing government. I will be a part of changing the schools. I'll be a part of changing media. I'll be a part of changing, you name it. I speak that forth because I believe it. Paul said, uh, we believed, therefore, I believe, therefore, we believe, therefore, we speak is what he actually said. Uh, when you are walking in dominion, you actually think with the mind of Christ. The uh, dominion has no uh, brokenness, uh, sickness, disease thinking in it at all. It doesn't have faulty thinking. Stinking thinking is a well-known preacher usually says. Um, it doesn't have that. Dominion thinking is thinking like Christ. It's dominating. It's being in charge of things. It's having possession over. So my thinking needs to line up with dominion thinking. If I'm always worried, what if this doesn't work out? And what if this, I'm not walking in dominion thinking. If I'm always depressed, I'm not because of my thoughts, not doing that. If I'm always wondering if God's plan is going to come to pass, not thinking in dominion thinking. And if every time a uncircum, uh, uh, an, 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 uh, how should I say it, an, uh, a circumstance that is not good comes about and I start thinking this circumstance is actually going to determine what my life would look like, what my future is going to look like, what their future is going to look like, then I'm not walking in dominion thinking. So how do I handle that? I just start speaking. There was a situation that came up yesterday i believe or, or or sometime in the very recent uh moments that it, it tried to come and try to whisper to me that something wasn't going to work out or, or, or fall in line 
I just began to open up my mouth. I said, oh no, we don't. Oh no, we don't. It sure will. I command it to, it will. But see, if we're not guarding our thoughts, if we're not on guard and aware, we'll begin to, to say that same story that the enemy came to bring you. And then you begin to say, you know what? I agree. I think you're right. I think you're right, devil. And so we don't even realize we're doing that, but we will start doing that. So cautious with that. Um, stop trying to have dominion with uh, material things, my friends. Can I just be honest with you? With habits, with men, women, control, manipulation. Let's stop trying to have dominion with material things, through material things. Those things mean nothing, nothing at all. Um, let's, just, let's just remember that dominion is a spiritual concept that is to be manifested. It will be manifested in the natural, but it's a spiritual concept that we must first understand. Now, I'm going to leave you with these few things. Remember that to that when you live out dominion, you're releasing and preparing for your generations to walk in the fullness of God. You release his purpose and his glory. You will be used to teach others to conquer their destinies. Um, you will hold on to the dominion that you have over your nation. In other words, you can break ground in some things in your nation. You can release this uh, dominion into other nations because you walk in it. You, you speak it out. You'll live it out. And remember that dominion is the key to kings, presidents, ministers, and people in authority in many places. Dominion, living in the in the in dominion and walking out in that authority is a powerful, powerful concept, my friends. So live it out. I'm going to pray for you so that you'll begin to live out the call that God gave you in Genesis 1, 26 and 28. But first I want to invite you, my friends, go to our website, TeresaLusk.com. We'd love to hear your testimonies. Please email us. Uh, we'd love to just hear from you, connect with us. Also, don't forget that I have invited you to become a partner with us today for our ministry, Teresa Lusk Ministries. Go to the website and click on donate and you can connect with us through social media. You can go find us on Facebook at Teresa Lusk Ministries and Instagram and a Freedom TV with Teresa Lusk. I can't wait to connect with you, my friends. And so uh, I'm going to pray for you right now. I'm going to release a blessing to you that you'll be able to rise up and begin to walk in that dominion. Take that dominion begin to adopt the dominion thinking and exchange everything that you've been walking in for the way the Lord intended it to be. So Father, right now in Jesus name, we release your son and your daughter to begin to walk in what you ordained for them to walk in. I thank you, Father, that they do not have to fear. They do not have to fret. They don't have to be concerned. God, they can rise up today and begin to say, Lord, teach me to walk in this dominion, to take hold of the dominion that's been handed to me at the cross and resurrection. Father, we pray that your son or daughter would have a renewed mind, that whatever they've been fearing would be broken today in Jesus' name, that they're not afraid to take a hold of what's theirs. You know, some of you are afraid of if you begin to speak like you have dominion, that the enemy will come and he'll threaten you. But I'm telling you, you're free from that. You have authority over it. And so rise up, my friend, today. Rise up in it.